What's going on, everyone? It's Mike back again, and we've got John, who's jubilant, who's excited, who is e reinvigorated following his nine and a half hour drive back from Brighton, singing all of the way back after a 1 1 draw. We didn't do a debrief. There's no point really debriefing it because it was a bit depressing. Um, however, we then find out, John, we get four points back today. So, how Buzzing at you. Um, it's nice I said last week on here that I thought we needed at least five to give me some sort of confidence that we were going to be okay. Now, we've got four. We've got this second here and hanging over our head, which obviously we've still been deducted six points. Now, I am going to ask you in a minute about this second appeal that we're going to have to put in because a lot of people are on the understanding that we've been hit with six and we possibly could get hit with another six but then we hear that 75 percent of the first points deduction has been taken and rolled over from the second sanction that we're getting so as you've pointed out to me the second one if we get a points deduction won't be as bad. Now, you know more about that than me. Um, you've followed it more than me. What I will say, now I've looked at the league and actually where we are after getting them four points back, it does look a lot better. But we need to know where Forrest stand. Obviously, Luton need to know what's happening with Everton and Forrest, especially have Everton with the second appeal. But at the end of the day, Michael, us as a club need to start picking up points from home. If we can get, and I think we agreed on this today, if we can get four wins out of the 12 games left, if we get another six points, you still think we'll be OK. For me, I don't know where the four wins are coming from because we can't score goals at all. Um, going back to the points deduction, yeah, listen, you could have said you're not getting any back. And that would have threw a real, real spanner in the works. But what I don't like about this second one, Michael, is he turned around and it looks like we're not going to find out the results of this second one until the season's been finished for five days. Now, that is an absolute disgrace for the simple fact of the matter. There's got to be something in place now where these appeals and these hearings and these charges need to be dealt with quicker because at the end of the season you could have Luton not knowing where they're going to finish Everton not knowing where they're going to finish Forrest not knowing where they're going to finish and also Brentford now there's, there's so much relying on this second appeal that Everton are going to have to put in for not just Everton but numerous other teams as well Ideally, we'd like to know where we are, where we finished and where we actually finished before the end of the season finishes regarding any more points that are going to be taken off us, if there's any more points going to be taken off us. What I've just said there, I'd like you to probably explain it a bit better to the, to the people who are watching, the subscribers, about this one where they might have already hit us for 75% of the second charge. Yeah, I mean, it's it, the problem with that is it, you're sort of guessing, and I don't understand when the cutoff was and when it's not. Um, and the other issue I have with the whole situation is the simple fact of the matter is the Premier League can pretty much decide what they want to do, um, leaving Everton very little time to fix it if it's this season. Um, look, I think there is an argument of double jeopardy, i.e., you know, they can't do the same thing twice. And I do think that. However, um, I also suspect that we will just get six points. I suspect they'll just give us another six. And I, and that's why I'm basing my, my head on. Um, now, another six, as of right now, puts us on, what, 19 points? So beyond 25 now puts us on 19 points. Well, I I think I think probably another 12, 15 points keeps us in the Premier League. I, I think I, I think the teams are not as good. I think Luton are going to have a blip. 
Um, we've still got to play Luton away from home. We've still got to play Forest at home. We've still got to play a couple of the teams in and around us. So, if I'm being honest, it's in our hands. That's that's why, you know, me and you have sat on this channel lots of times and we've said, look, if you can't win your home games, you don't deserve to be a Premier League team. Well, the argument stands this season, irrespective of getting six points, 12 points, 10 points, four points, it doesn't matter. If you can't win your home games against teams that on paper you should win at home, you don't deserve to be a Premier League team, John. And that's always been my argument. Yes, you know, going away to Brentford and winning was lovely. Going away to West Ham and winning was lovely. You know, uh, the away performances have been great. 95 minutes being 1-0 away at Brighton, great. But, John, we've lost 3-0 at home to, to Man United. We've lost 1-0 at home to Luton twice or 2-1 or whatever it was. We've lost at Fulham at home. We've lost to Wolves at home. So... As much as the away results have been great, the home games have been poor. And that's what worries me. And that's why I think the points deduction, I think I honestly think we just need to say, right, we've got a 12 point deduction and we need to achieve 50 points. And that's what I think the aim should be. I think uh, if you if you listen to a lot of Everton fans and also looking at social media, I think a lot of us feel like there's a little bit of pressure being lifted now because listen. We've got clarity now from this first hearing. We know where we are. Forget what's going to happen in the future because I think, in my opinion, I think this was a bigger one than the second one. The first one was, was always going to... I think this was the one that was playing on our mind more, wasn't it? You know what I mean? Because if we, if we do get hit again, whether it be another six points, I know it's two more than what we had but we've sort of got a bit of clarity now, haven't we? You know what well, I mean? We, and, we, and we know we, what we've got to do and we've seen the league table and I'm telling you now, listen, we've sat here, we've slagged certain players off, we've both sat here and we've had a pop of dice. Not if we end up with a 12-point deduction and we still stay up. He deserves a statue, that man. I'm telling you yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I hate the football. I hate the football. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I, I, it's, it's some of the worst. Yeah, I hate it. It's some of the worst. It's some of the worst football I've seen at Goodison Park in my life. However, I did not think that Everton would go to Brighton and get a one-one draw. I did not think we'd go to West Ham. I don't think. Didn't think we'd go to Brentford. I didn't think we'd play quite well away at Liverpool. If I'm being honest, you know, up until there was a man sent off, I thought we were going to get a point there. Dice has made us really difficult to beat, and I commend him for that, and I thank him for that. <coughs> it's an absolute <coughs> disservice with the forwards he's playing, and a little bit tactically about his decisions has been has been shocking at times. But Dice probably is exactly what we need right now. The the bigger picture for me with PSR, John. And, and not necessarily Dyche, not an Everton problem. And it's it's a problem that clubs like Everton have got, is we are going to become feeder clubs for the big six because their PSR will always be higher than ours because of the money that they bring in. Now, yes, people will say, well, their wages are higher, but they can cope with them better. They have better ratios of income to commercial deals to wages. So they can always spend more. The problem with the PSR rules is, Fundamentally, it shafts Everton from trying to go up in that next step. It shafts Newcastle. It's it shafts Villa. It shafted Forest. Forest, Forest, for example, have been shafted simply because their ratio, their target, is not 105 million. It's actually 61 million. So Forest have been shafted simply because of rules between getting promoted. How is that fair on Forest? So mm. this whole PSR thing that has happened this season with the, you know, the rules coming home to roost has made football a farce. Um, I don't enjoy going to the games anymore, but not not because I don't love Everton. I love Everton. I love the fans. I love everything about the club and I always have and I always will. But you don't know what's going to happen on decisions with VAR. You don't. The, the refereeing in the league is shocking. The PGML don't know the arse from the Alba. The rules for football are created by a company or a group called IFAB, which don't have a clue and try introducing blue cards. 
the whole football idea of being a good game, a family game, going and supporting your team, it's all finished because of corporate yeah. greed and corruptness. So, you know, the, the PSR charges are one thing, but football and Everton and me and you and every other match-going fan of any of the other 14 clubs, it's not fun anymore. It's not fun anymore. I don't enjoy uh, yeah. going to the football, and I know you don't. But what you enjoy is the sitting on the coach, singing your heart out with the fans, you know, the, the taking your lad to the game. That's what you enjoy. You don't enjoy the 95 minutes that's on that pitch because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't enjoy yeah. the football. It's shocking. This, do you know what it is, Michael, right? Um, everyone, or well, not everyone, but, you know, people from outside the Premier League and chairmen from all over the world, and, and like Andy Gray and Richard Keyes, for example, they all come out and they say, oh, the Premier League's the best league in the world. Jamie Carragher says it. It's not. It's not the best league in the world whatsoever. And this might sound harsh and people will probably have a pop at me. Oh, if Everton, God forbid, did go down, I wouldn't lose any sleep. For the simple fact of the matter, I want away from this Premier League, hear me out, while it's this corrupt. While you've got them four, five, six teams who get away with poaching players, as you've just said, and, and using the other clubs as feeder clubs, right? Because there's no in-between in the, in the Premier League anymore. There's no middleman. You're either one of them, big six, who are the Sky Darlings and the Premier League Darlings, and then you've got the other 14 who just make the numbers up, just so there's fixtures to play. Now, It'd kill me if Everton got relegated. But you know, when I look at it, I think I'd draw the watch championship football, right? Because there's no VAR, I don't think. There's no corruptness. The referees are fair. 95% of teams in the championship will give it a go week in, week out. The players don't roll around like they've been shot. The Premier League, for me, is finished. As, as an entity, it's not the biggest league in the world anymore. Yeah, it's got the pull. And the reason why it's got the pull is the same reason why the Qatari leagues have now got the pull. It's all about that. And that's all it is with the Premier League and attracting these players. We can't even... We still do attract the big players, the big name players. But look at some of the players that the Qatari league is now attracting. You know what I mean? And that's going the same way. The Premier League, as a business, in my opinion, is finished while it's corrupt, while they can't use VAR properly. But you know the main thing for me is the people who you've got running it don't know their arse from their elbow, i.e. a Richard Masters who was there yesterday in the crowd, hugging Klopp. Klopp was one of the people who sort of said, yeah, get him in kissing his ass. How is that a fair level playing field when you see things like that? Because I guarantee you now, if Chelsea win that game yesterday, you don't see Richard Masters blowing smoke up Pochettino's ass. So for me, as a business, because that's what it is, the Premier League is a business, football's a business. While you've got it run by these inept people who were just grabbing 10 points out the air and throwing them round willy-nilly and dragging appeal hearings out so no one knows what the fuck is going on. That's not fair. That's not right. You're leaving other teams hanging. And now they're going to leave maybe three, four teams who are going to be involved down the bottom once the season's finished, not knowing what league they're going to be in next season. How is yeah. that right? So my understanding of that, so just to just to <clears throat> so my understanding is that Forest hearing will be a month earlier than ours and we'll finish on yeah, the Yeah, but if day. they appeal it, if they appeal that, it rumbles over, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean I I don't know how that'll work, John, if I'm being honest. But <clears throat> whatever happens, um Everton have set president. So the president is there today. So as long as they don't necessarily agree with too much of that report, and they the, stick the to Premier the Premier League have set a precedent as well. 
by giving Everton a points deduction. They've set one as well. So they can't just fuck Everton over and fuck Forrest over this season. And then after this, let teams get away with it. Man City have got 115 charges to answer to. They're here, it's not starting until the autumn. They're changing the rules in August. How is that fair? Well, is that being confirmed about the rules changing? Well, apparently so, yeah, yeah. I've heard it quite a bit. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't know about the rules changing. I, knew, I heard about the what they were on about doing, and I don't agree with it. But, you know, if Everton's here in the 8th of April, and it finishes on the 8th of May. That means that the independent commission that are appointed and the Premier League now are fairly confident that there isn't going to be an appeal from either us or Forrest. Now, if that's the case and Everton get there, you know, it get, we get another six points. Worst case scenario. We have to appeal that. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. But... If, I think yeah. it all depends where we finish, doesn't it? If, we, if the season ends and we get hit with another six points and them six points taken off us doesn't drop us into that bottom three, fuck the appeal. We know yeah, where we're playing next so, season. So what I was saying was the the appeal the it starts on the eighth of April and it will finish apparently on the eighth of May. That leaves us with two games left of the Premier League to save ourselves if we have to. Those two games are Sheffield United at home and Arsenal away. Now, that's the bit that hits me, is the fact that if Everton don't start winning their home games, and mate, Everton between them have got Brentford at home, Forest at home, Burnley at home, Liverpool at home, and West Ham at home. Now, I would like to think that there is 10 points there. As so, with, a look, with six taken off, that puts us on what, 19? So, so, so we got them 10 points that you reckon we get puts us on 29. Do we stay up with that? That's what I've done. It's just shit out of it, leaving us out. Yeah, but Forrest are only going to get hit with one sanction, aren't they? They yeah, haven't got another one hanging over their head. No, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's almost like we're a point ahead of Forrest. So, our first oh, sanction, yeah. so they'd be relying on us to get more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so our first sanction now is done. We are where we are. We're fifteenth in the league, um, and and look, if you'd have offered me that at the start of the season, I, I wouldn't have necessarily took it, but I wouldn't have been too shocked. Um, so we are where we are. It's what we do now. It's what we do now. It's how fast we win those six points back. And in my opinion, the way to do that is to get a shock result somewhere. You know, get them three points where you don't expect it to be. Now, I'm going to give you a place now where I think that might happen. Old Trafford. I think Everton might go to Man United and win. So where's the other three coming from? Do you think we beat West Ham? I think we beat West Ham. I think we beat Man United. I think we draw with Liverpool. I think we lose to Bournemouth, lose to Newcastle. I think we beat Burnley. I think we get a point away at Chelsea. I think we beat Forest, beat Brentford, lose to Luton, beat Sheffield United and lose to Arsenal. And and anyone in the comments, if you can work out the maths for us, that would be great. But that's what I think will happen. Is Newcastle away, isn't it? I don't think, I really don't. And, uh, you know, a load of people have given me so much shit in the comments about being negative and whatever. And it's like they don't listen to what I'm saying. I'm actually positive. Like, I'm actually up for it. You know, if, if you was to say to me, Mike, you're going into battle, mate, I'll get on my horse right now. My need is back reinforcing. But I'll get climb up on that horse in my armour with my sword 
and fucking go into battle for our football team. And I'll be there screaming and shouting for the next 12 games. Do not worry about that. The facts are, though, we need the players to turn it on. And they are more than capable of doing it because we've seen it. We won six, drew one, and lost one in an eight-game period. This Everton team is more than capable of getting results. We need to see it. We need our strikers to start scoring. We need, if they're not going to score, we need to change it. If we're going to go for a midfield, play our best midfielders. You know, Manana's been on the bench the last three games. Don't understand it personally. Starting. I want to see Everton go for it on, on Saturday, on, on the weekend. Go for West Ham. Don't sit back deep. Go and have a go. Because our best... West Ham, is- West Ham have a one in three now. And they're playing tonight. If they get beat tonight, if they get beat tonight, that's four. Now, you'd like to think on it. You're playing a team like that at home after getting four points back under the fallacy that is the Goodison Park floodlights, by the way. Right. You'd like to think, wouldn't you, that Everton will beat West Ham? But as we've spoke about on here, we just you've just spoke about the run we went on where we won six or whatever it was and, and what have you. Um, there's no in between with this Everton side, Michael. That's Maybe. the problem we have. This is, you know, that's the problem. We're either shocking or we put Brighton performances in from last season. Do you know what I mean? Or Brentford performance is in from this season. There's no in between. We need the latter more now than anything. I think getting the four points back, listen, I think we all expected to get, well, I expected to get more than we need. I thought we needed more. Looking at the lead table, going against the West Ham team who aren't playing well. Moyes is under pressure. Monday night, Goodison Park will be rocking. I know you said today you were looking at tickets and stuff and you can't get one. They're like rocking all shite at the minute. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it is, it's it's a big, big, big game Monday. As you quite rightly say, the game after that is Old Trafford away. Everton's form away has been better than our home form. Man United are hot and cold. They got beat by Fulham the other day. If Everton put a performance in, like we've just been speaking about, where there's no in-between, whether either shocking or really good, i.e. Brighton last season, Brentford this season, if we can find two performances like that in the next two games, as you quite rightly say, there's our six points back if we get hit with six points again. Mm. And then with the games we've got coming up at home, we're very, very capable of picking up enough points to stay away from that relegation zone with another six points. This club needs the fans now. The fans have been fantastic through this era, through the corruption that we've been calling onto the Premier League, standing there with the banners every week, every home game, every away game. Fans have been fantastic. Now it's time for the players to stand up and be counted now. 3,000 fans went down to Brighton the other day. I was caught as we lost it in the 95th minute. By the way, where the fuck did he get nine minutes from? That's a thing for another video. Um, again, basically wanted to play till they fucking scored. Um, the fans need, the, the club needs the fans now more than ever, more than what they have. But we need the players to start putting performances in. We need Dice to start in and us coin. If players aren't performing, if players aren't in the net, make changes. Make changes because we need to start scoring goals. I think it's going to be boss on Monday. It's going to be proper boss Monday. It, it's, a, it's a Saturday kickoff, John, just to Sorry, you. Saturday. Sorry, Saturday. Yeah. Um, we need it. We need this win on Saturday against West Ham more than ever. Just to kick start and get a win. We haven't won since we won away at West Ham. Do you know what I mean? I think that was the last time Carver Lewin scored as well. We need performances now. Always and... scores against West Ham. Well, let's hope he does it again on Saturday. Um because yeah, you know, as you quite rightly said, if the worst thing happens. And we do get another six points. These next two games coming up, we're very capable of wiping them six points off before we've even been hit with them. We are. We're playing two teams. One who's hot and cold, the Man United, and West Ham who've been shocking lately. As I said, the manager's under pressure. They don't look like they're playing for them anymore. Six points the next two games wipes it off and then we can build on that more than with the home games we've got coming up. 
what john said guys make sure you hit the like and subscribe button john thank you as always we will see you for the match preview for everton against west ham that may not be thursday it may be friday or it might be wednesday uh i'm not 100 yet i am out on thursday night so guys keep smiling up the toffees we're gonna win the fucking lot <laughs>